Welcome to Jacksonville, Florida, and the annual site of one of the best rivalries in the sport. Not a lot of distance between the Gators and the Dogs, and once a year they come here close to the state line and draw their own battle lines. This matchup today, part of the lifeblood of the sport. A rivalry game where the results will be remembered for a lifetime. As we'll see a squad from the SEC, the Florida Gators, taking on the number one team in the land, the Georgia Bulldogs. For EA Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. And guys, can't wait to get this one started. will kick it away first. On the run from inside his own five. Nice job executing all of the assignments as they put a stop to that return at the 22. The Bulldogs offense takes the field. This nasty, bitter feud, most of the years carried out on supposedly neutral ground, carries high, high stakes today. I'll tell you what's always fun about watching this game between Florida and Georgia is that there is just so much speed on the field. I felt that way when I played in this game. There's so much NFL talent racing around. The game just moves faster than most other games in college football. I completely agree, but you did say the name of the game wrong. It's the Georgia-Florida game. Uh, in this rivalry, it's always played in Jacksonville, but speed, bragging rights, this game always matters to the fans. Looking downfield, it's back. And he drops it, just took his eye off of it at the last minute. Last time these two met, the big dogs ate as Georgia rolled easily. And taking care of business in a rivalry game like they did, it means a lot. The bragging rights are even better. I can talk about stomping you out. Speaking of stomp, 2007, Mark Rick and the team to run on the field, celebrate. Those are the moments that you think about in this series that mean so much. Yeah, we talked to the Gator coaching staff. They said it felt like Herschel Walker was back toting the rock for the Bulldogs. I mean, they had no answer for Georgia's running game a season ago. Defensively, the Gators know they've got to be a lot more physical in this one. It's on the punt team. First time we've seen their punt team this afternoon. And the coverage team gets to return her on the ground. So the Florida Gators offense will go to work for the first time today. You know, yards figure to be hard to come by through the air, but some quarterbacks, Jesse, just love to go at the star corner. Yeah, and this guy's got confidence. He's not afraid to go at anybody, but he better be careful because this cornerback is one of the best in the nation. One of the best, no doubt. I think they will trust him on defense to make plays. So you got to make a decision. Is my guy good enough to beat him on the outside? I am fascinated by this matchup. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. The give to the back. Nowhere to run on that when he loses four on the carry. You know, when you're running counter, those offensive linemen crashing down, they've got to be able to pin those interior D linemen. They couldn't get it done there. They gave up too much penetration, and that led to the tackle for loss. A third and long coming up here. To the air, it's Mertz. They've got the screen set up. They finally get him stopped, but what a good job by that front wall to set up the screen and create some lanes for their running back. Hey, man, sometimes you get the perfect play call at the perfect time. That time, the defense blitzing. Offensive line allowed everybody to run upfield, and they slip in the running back screen, and behind it, there was nobody there to make a tackle, and this offense generates a massive play. Through his hands and incomplete. He normally makes that catch every time. It's second down. David, as a Georgia legend, when I say Florida, what comes to mind? Ugh. I mean, that, that, that's the easiest question you've asked me yet. I mean, there, there's nothing that I ever liked or enjoyed about the Florida Gators. Just playing in that rivalry, you know, it's not a neutral site, by the way. It's in Jacksonville, Florida. Like, 
that's not neutral. It, it's way closer to Florida. It's way closer to Florida fans. But this rivalry, I'm telling you, every single year, that was the number one game you won. Man, this guy is exciting to watch. When he has the ball in his hands, he can make magic happen. They're going to throw it to him. They're going to hand it off to him. They're going to get him the ball in a variety of ways, and they're doing it early in this game. Will they keep it on the ground again here on third down? He'll just keep slinging it. And that's incomplete. A defender all over him. Knocked the ball to the ground. Fourth down coming up. This is a point where you just got to be able to focus. And the critical down and distances in this game, like that third down right there, when it's a good throw, you got to make the catch. You've got to be able to make that play. And the Gators will line up to punt it away. He ought to be able to use his first punt to pin him deep. And that is textbook instructional video. Out of bounds right around the goal line. They'll try the run. One step wrap, two step squeeze. This junior knows how to get him on the ground. Yeah, and the running back didn't get much here, but you know, you clearly want to always establish the tempo, run the football, be consistent, make that defense physically meet the challenge. Picked up two yards on that last when they need eight on second down. Takes a handoff. It's ETN. He hits that hole. It opened up for him as he gets six and all the way out to the nine-yard line. Just a simple power play. Power football. Be strong. Be big. Be physical. Make it a fourth-quarter game. Make them feel you. Keep them off balance. Third and short, they've got them back up inside the 20, and the D can get the ball back here. They'll try to bully their way for the first. Slam to the ground, but not before he gets the first down. Well, the offense knew what they needed to get that first down, so they dial up the running play, and they get just enough to keep the drive alive. The Bulldogs will snap it on first and 10. They'll try the right side. Weaves his way ahead and gets five out to the 18-yard line. I, I like it. Just frustrate the defense. Get that five to six yards. Make them honor the run. Make them know that you're willing to run the football and run it effectively. Halfway there on first down, it's second and five. Out of the gun, they'll run it inside. He'll be stopped just short of the 20 at the 19, give him one. These two first met back in 1915, and for much of their history, they've been sleeping giants. But man, when they wake up, do they wake up? Well, it, it, two programs, obviously, with a lot of history and a lot of great players in the past, but I feel like because of the recent success of both Georgia and Florida in the last couple of decades, this is a game every year that everybody, not just in the SEC, but I think around the country, have circled because of what this game means. Well, and it's so cool when, when you're a fan and you've played in this game like me and Jesse both have. You can go back to a singular moment, like run, Lindsey run, in 1980, which was a third and long on their own seven that they converted Georgia to go on to win a national title. Big games decided by big moments that live forever. Georgia lining up to punt it away. He's going to try to flip the field with this one. Fair catch is called for. You want to make sure that you field it cleanly in rainy weather like this. Florida has the ball back, and here comes the offense. They'll give it to Johnson. And he doesn't find much running room, a short gain on the play. It's just so nice to know you can start off on first down with positive plays. Positive yards, hand the football off, set up a good second down. Got three on first down, it's second and seven. Dropping back, it's Mertz. Gets it out quickly. And they knock him down, but he got past the line to gain. Well, it's a nice play design there. You're getting the running back involved in the pass game. The quarterback gives it to him early so he can go to work upfield and get the first down. The offense sets up chop at the 46 on first down. Quarterback touch pass on the jet sweep. 
And they'll wrestle him to the ground after a short game. And these little touch passes, man, they're just the easiest completions ever for quarterbacks. Palmer, I bet you would have loved being able to just flip it forward. That counts as to your completion percentage, which is good. And then it's all run after the catch, so pretty easy for a QB. You wouldn't have been the only All-American in this booth game if I were allowed to have to push passes <laughs> when I was playing quarterback. I'll tell you that. It is so hard to defend. It's so hard to seal that edge, especially when this guy's full speed ahead coming around the inside. Knocked down at the 29-yard line. Picked up 15 yards on the play, and he's got a first down. Defense has dominated the early part of this game, and the stats point that out emphatically. Sometimes you see the offenses sort of settle in, find areas to probe after that first quarter. Looking to move it through the air. Coming a shot toward the end zone. Fires a ball, and now it's picked off. Bulldozes him. And a big return after the INT sets up the offense for this possession. I tell you, you got to give the defense credit, though, because with these conditions, it's not easy to catch for the offensive players. Certainly not for the defense, but great eye-hand coordination securing that interception. And Georgia ready to go back to work on offense. They just didn't quite find the rhythm on that last drive, Jesse. They had to punt it. I think they got to be more physical, David. I think up front, they got to do a better job getting blocks and establishing this running field. And how easy does football become if you're the more physical team? If you can threaten the run and then, then run play action, it opens up the whole offense at your disposal. After the incompletion, it's second and 10 from their own 25. Takes a handoff. It's ETN. Tackle is made at the 28 after a pickup of three. The run game just has not been working for this offense all game long. We saw it on that last play as well. Just not getting enough push up front on the offensive line. They haven't been physical. They've made third down offense a key. It'll be tested on third and long from the 28. Off the bootleg, looking to fire. And the Heat will get home, and the quarterback goes down at the 17. The defense just simply not fooled by the play action. Oftentimes, in offense, you're hoping the run fix is going to slow down those pass rushers, but man, oh man, they had their ears pinned back. Georgia sends out the punt team. Doesn't say much for your drive when you're looking forward to the punt. Fair catch is called for in the midst of all this rain. Just concentrate on one thing, making the catch. Give to the single back. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Great job by the whole defense. But how about the little bitty defense in the back? Throwing his face in the fan. I ain't scared. I don't just cover guys. I make tackles. After getting knocked back to open this drive, it's second and 12. Here's the handoff. Several defenders get an assist on that tackle. Yeah, and I love this because you got second and really, really long. And what's the idea of the offensive coordinator? To get third and manageable. Nice job getting the run, not only a positive run, shoot, you almost got the first down. Now you're set up for good success on third down. Let's see if they go back to the run here on third down. They'll try to pick up the first through the air. Gets it out fast. He's run out of bounds, but he's got enough to move the sticks. Really nice job there by the quarterback, understanding that it's zone coverage on third down. If you're going to have to find someone working into a soft spot, get the ball out of your hands quickly, make an accurate throw, and pick up the first. Well done. The Gators getting set on first and ten.
using the quick game. Nice completion here to this wide receiver. And you're going to see this receiver line up in different spots all over the field all game long. Defense has got to keep their eye on where this guy is because they know he's a big part of this offense's success. Tried to pound it on first down. Now back to the line. The give to the running back from the shotgun. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. It's hard to run on a defense that comes off the ball like that and runs to the football like that. Good luck. No holes anywhere. This is the type of play that decides games. Are you tough enough to convert third and short from the 30? Looking to throw, it's Mertz. Quick strike complete. And they gave him no chance to get loose, and they force a fourth down. They were counting on making a few yards after the catch on third down. Instead, they're staring at fourth. Yeah, and I think a lot of times you trust your guy. You, you throw it to him, and you say, I can make somebody miss or lower my shoulder and get to the sticks. The defense had none of that. Nice job tackling. Nice job forcing the fourth down. It's good. Easy call for the ref. And the first points of the day come on that field goal. They'll kick it away after putting up a field goal on that last drive. He'll start the return inside his five. He was looking for more running room, but none to be found as he stopped at the 23. We're ready to get another look at this Bulldog offense. Their drive chart is starting to look a little monotonous. Punt, 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 David. And their defense is starting to get a little frustrated, too. They just keep putting me back on the field, possession after possession. Jesse, this offense needs to get their heads out of there, you know what. The punter's on the sideline with the oxygen mask right now. He's been playing so much. He's not used to this. This offense, they just got to stay on the field. They've got to put a drive together and get some balance going, running and throwing the ball. They knock him down right there. That back had nowhere to go. The defensive line ate up the block. How about the linebackers swarming in, coming in and making a great play on the ball carry? They come to the line, facing third and long from the 25. To the air, it's back. He's going to let it go. And they can't hook up on the big play, and that brings up a fourth down. Well, this is huge for this defense because they're playing against a Heisman caliber quarterback, a guy that can hurt them in a variety of ways. They better be able to get pressure on throughout the course of this game they did right there. Georgia lining up to punt away. Fourth time tonight we've seen this guy come on to punt. Working his way on the return up to the 40-yard line before he stopped. The Gators sending the offense back to work. They've been pretty much stifled on offense so far, David. Only able to muster three points in their previous three drives. And you got to find a way to open this up and create some explosive plays. Like the passing game is obviously the easiest way. Jesse, put more speed on the field. Find those guys down the field. And you know they're frustrated, too, because they felt like there were some matchups they could take advantage of to get some points on the board early in this one. They just haven't been able to connect on those opportunities. But I like David's idea. Maybe move some guys around and see if you can create some better one-on-one -on -one matchups. Takes a hit as he fought. And he intercepts it. Oh, how did he make that move? And he's wrapped up after a solid return on the pick. This is obviously not a great start for this quarterback here. Two interceptions already in this game. He's got to do a much better job with his decision. First down here with time for maybe one more play until the two-minute warning. Use the play fake. Now to throw. 
Fires into traffic, picked off. Got room on the return. He's at the 40. The 20. And he's going to run it all the way back. Touchdown, Gator! They'll try to add another to their lead. And with the extra point, they're now up by a touchdown and a field goal at 10. They're lining up to kick it off after the pick six, and that defense will come out feeling it. On the move from inside his spot. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. And Georgia ready to go back to work on offense. Not a lot of time left here in the half. Let's see if they can cut into this lead. And this drive isn't a must score, but man, you look at the scoreboard. You're down two scores. Jesse, you got a good opportunity. Create some momentum. Cut it to a one-score game. This is an important possession. Yeah, it's important to create that momentum now, David, too, and not wait to get it going here at the start of the third quarter. You've got one drive here to get a couple of points. You've got to start erasing and chipping away at this deficit. This could be where the game turns right here. He's run out of bounds, but not before. Turning in a big pickup and moving the sticks for a first down. Well, they pick up the first down there on the screen. I love the offensive line there, allowing the pass rush to get way up the field. They completely baited their guys, made them think that they got beaten, that they were going to get the sack, and then they sneak the running back screen right in behind them and pick up the first. Looking to the big tight end. He's got it. He puts him in business across the 50 into the 46-yard line. It'll be first down. Well, they've done nothing on offense so far, but if they can put some points on the board before halftime, it could really change things. No doubt. Go into the locker room with some good juices, some good vibes, and, and momentum can switch a game in a heartbeat. But this offense hasn't had much to cheer about yet. That play gives them one play. Now let's go build on it and make something happen before the half. Grabbed in the middle. It's love it. This quarterback right now is in a groove, and he's doing a nice job in pre -snap. He's reading the coverage, and he's getting an idea of where he wants to go with the football. That's why the ball's coming out of his hands so quickly. That's why he seems like he's in a great rhythm. Trying to convert this second and short. Scanning the field. It's back. Fires to the wide out. Connection to the right. And the catch and run into the end zone. Touchdown, dogs! And I tell you what, that passing touchdown, man, that should spark this whole team. Like, the comeback is more than on now. Like, they got the touchdown. They cut into the lead. You want to get a stop and go into the half, get all the juices, all the excitement, and be like, listen, the passing game's rolling. We got this. The comeback's in full effect. Getting set for the point after. And with the extra point, the lead is cut to three. It's 10 to seven. A very efficient five-way scoring drive. And they pay it off with a strike from 38 yards out. So they got the touchdown, and as they kick off, really important for the defense to shut them down here. He'll bring it back from inside his five. Couldn't find a way to create that broken field as he stopped at the 25. Florida has the ball back, and here comes the offense. 
They've got time. They've got the lead. And David is sort of like a doctor. First, do no harm. Do no harm, but also momentum is hard to create and sometimes hard to stop. You have it. So, Jesse, don't do anything stupid to create some momentum for the other side. I think a lot of this comes down to your quarterback and whether or not he's making good decisions in this game. If yes, be aggressive. If not, let's just take the lead into halftime and get ready for the second half. Motion by the back forces the defense to adjust. Trying to get to it. And the pressure gets there. And down he goes at the 18. Here's a timeout on the field. Tight game here late in the first half. Not exactly the ideal situation for this offense. Third and long back up inside their 20. The handoff to Johnson. And the defense is swarming to keep him from getting to the first down. Defense calls a quick timeout there. Perhaps a little confusion about what call they were in. The Gators line up to punt it away. Three and out. They got stuck in reverse. They hope the punt can bail them out. He gets a block. And the returner will be dragged down. Here's this offense with a fresh set of downs. To the air. It's back. Almost had the completion. Just missed it. Obviously, when you're playing in weather like this, the ball is very slippery and it's hard to catch. The QB threw a bullet that time, and his receiver just could not reel it in. Here comes the offense on second down. After the incompletion, back to the passing game. He let one fly deep. And the incomplete pass taking a shot on second down, and they'll be left with a third down. And as an offense, you want to stay aggressive. You want to keep calling these downfield shots. I know you didn't complete that one, but you want to send a clear message. You're trying to take the top off this defense. You keep calling downfield shots, you soften up the coverage, you get those safeties playing deep. That's going to open up your running game later on. Unloads to the wideout. He's got it. He will step out of bounds, but not before the big pickup and a first down for this offense. Third down, a lot of times it comes down to not necessarily who's the most open, who do you trust the most? No, it's not about the X's and the O's. It's about the Jimmy's and the Joe's. And when my guy's better than you and I get you matched up out wide and I know I trust you, I'm finding you. Oh, he had it right down the middle and it just squirted right through his fingers and they miss an opportunity for a nice play on first down. Running out of time here in the first half. They're going to have to be efficient to put some points on the board before the break. He'll try it again on second and ten. A strike downfield. And they'll finally catch up to him, but not before a big chunk of yardage is picked up. We've got a timeout in the waning seconds of the half. Maybe a chance to get off a couple more plays. On the run. It's back. And a little too much adrenaline on that throw. Never gave his receiver a chance. And in the closing moments of the first half, they'll try to put a three spot on the board. A relatively short field goal try from 26 yards out. And this one splits the uprights. And the field goal draws us even as we get close to halftime. How big was that? Kicking the field goal at a tie the game going into halftime. And you just sent a message to your opponent. There's a lot of ball left. We've got a lot of juice left in the tank. This game could go any way here in this last half. So they get the late field goal right before the half and not much time after this kickoff for an answer. From inside his own 10, let's see what he gets. They make the stop on the return and that is priority one. You don't want some big return to give up a cheap touchdown on the final play of the half. That's the end of the second quarter. That means it's time to join Kevin in our halftime update. Fellas, it's one thing to have a rivalry game, but when you have two longtime foes like the Gators and Dogs duking it out on neutral turf, you know emotions will run high. 
and it's been a clinic in fundamental defensive football. Both teams have been relentless and ball hawking, refusing to give an inch. This is the kind of slugfest that real football fans love. Crushing tackles and dudes flying into gaps and passing lanes. A testament to the discipline both of these teams have shown. With that, let's throw it back to the guys to see how the fight between Florida and Georgia plays out. And the Bulldogs will try to kick this one deep to get things underway in the second half. Here he comes from inside his own five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. The Gators sending the offense back to work. First drive of the second half, always fun to watch. You see what type of tweaks were made at the half, especially when you're locked up in a ball game like this one. Yeah, and it's been a good game. I mean, it's been a little bit of back and forth and, and a feeling out process. And now once you get in the second half, who's going to get aggressive, Palmer? Who's going to take some shots, try to make some plays, and really go for it? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I think as play callers right now, you learn a lot about these coaching staffs with respect to who does make the best adjustments. There's a lot of coaches that believe we're just going to be who we are. We're going to keep doing what we do. We're just going to do it better. But then there are others that tweak things a little bit on offense and on defense. We're going to find out here. Reacted well to the tip and just couldn't squeeze the football. Instead of the turnover, it'll be third down. And that, and that was good defense again, and unfortunately, we've been saying that all game long. Really, really good defense. Or, listen, you can spin on the other side. This offense has really been bad. On third down, he'll try to pick it up through the yeah. air. And the quarterback caught up to and sacked up the 12. On third and long, you know what's coming. It's exactly where you want to get an offense. The passing game has to come out. You go nickel, bring some more speed on the field and the defensive line gets home and gets the sack to force the fourth down. And the Gators send out the punt unit. Three and out and not much choice but to get rid of the ball. Take the return out of the equation in this rainy weather. Fair catch is signal four and made. We're ready to get another look at this Bulldog offense. And then a low-scoring game like this one, David, every possession is magnified. And I think more than anything, it just gets frustrating. And you got to put that behind you. you got to see what this defense has been doing to be so successful. Caller, now use it against them. Yeah, David, I think for a play caller, this is tough, right? It's like you have to have the perfect play on just to get a first down. In these types of games, I think you're just trying to get guys out in space, see if a dude can break a tackle. Maybe that generates an explosive play, and it breaks this trend. On the run, it's Etienne. That's what you expect from a senior. Don't give them any extra yards. Great tackle there. I never know if it's grammatically correct to say a team is being out physical. You hear it a lot in football, though. That's happening in this game. They are just not getting the push they need all game long up front to have any success with the side of the run. They'll try to drive ahead on third and short. Putting together a real scoring threat here as they pick up the first down at the 36. Wow, the running back there showing you his skill set as he's able to rip off that one for a first down. Georgia coming out with a fresh set of downs. Wide receiver shows motion. Been showing them the run. Now they'll throw it. Pulls it in. And he was loose and in the open field and on his way. A tremendous pickup on that one. Sometimes your tight end's a safety valve, and sometimes he's your go-to receiver. And the offense knew right away it was the primary target. It was where he was going with the football, because you know you get a little bit of suck up from those linebackers with the play action, and you feed the big fella. Looking for the score. Can't make the grab as he was looking for his man right at the goal line. Another incompletion, and I've said that a lot. And these teams are just struggling. I mean, the offense just doesn't know what to do. Nothing's working. Ground game, throw game. It's kind of been a rock fight on both sides. Bunch formation for these receivers. Leaves it with the running back. 
Pulled down after a pickup of three. Ball's at the 13. Boy, they'd love to pick up this conversion and go to work with a first and goal. Wide receiver now comes in motion. On third down, going up top. Pockets, and he's all bottled up, and now it's worse. The ball's loose. Defense coming up with a huge fumble recovery. Well, it's one thing not to get the touchdown when you get into the red zone, but to turn it over and get nothing, that can be devastating. Yeah, you just got to know the situation, Reese. You're at least going to try and kick the field goal and take the lead at this juncture of the football game here in the second half. But down in the red zone, you just got to do a better job with ball security. That is a missed opportunity for the offense. Florida has the ball back, and here comes the offense. The sledding has been tough. Scores have been at a premium, Jesse, and every possession seems like it could switch the momentum of the game. Yeah, Reese, for this offense, just feels like they just haven't been as physical. And for this offensive coordinator, David, he's having to go deep into the playbook just to try to generate a first down. Well, and the good thing is there's not a ton of game pressure because the other side's not scoring either. But if you can find that one thing that... Get that one positive play, and then maybe you get those juices going, and something can start to build. He is going nowhere. Stop at the line of scrimmage. That DB had a different story. He had something to say. Coming up, making a physical tackle. Got stuffed on first down. It's second and ten. Wide out in motion. Quarterback flips it ahead quickly to the receiver. Only a couple there, and now staring at third and eight. Well, and on these little push passes, timing is so important. You're trying to snap it right as he's getting a full head of steam. When he gets the ball, he's hitting the outside, and David, it puts the defense in such a difficult spot. You immediately have to be rotating when you see that motion, so everybody's got to communicate and kind of bump over. That's why offenses love to run it. Just It makes the defense communicate and see if you can just get him out of the spot. That pass is well off target. He got hit as he was trying to throw, and they can't convert on third down. Oh, you know what time it is when the defense gets that stop on third down. Fist up in the air. Nice job getting to the quarterback, putting some pressure on him, hitting him, forcing the incompletion. Fourth down, baby. Signals for the fair catch and makes it at the 20. And Georgia ready to go back to work on offense. After that last drive, he came back to the sideline and the coach probably said, you dropped it and you didn't pick it up? Come on, get on the ball, David. No, that's not what he said. He said, you're doing a great job. Just keep your head up. Oh, yeah, he got blasted. you got to hold on to the football, Palmer. Turnovers to side games, those are big plays. It's tough on him, too, because he knows he let his offense down on that last drive. So you know that guy's eager and anxious to come out here and make a play. This has been a tight one. Third quarter all tied up. It's now second and ten. Now the play fade. Oh, he's going to take a shot at the DB. Oh, he drops it. That is a catch he makes 99 times out of 100, but it'll be third down. Man, that's one you expect him to make in his sleep, right? He's one of the better receivers in the entire country. He just dropped that one over the middle of the field. Third and 10, still backed up inside their own 20. This drive hasn't really gotten started. Back to throw, it's back. Unloads to the right. It's complete. He's run out of bounds, but a big play on that one, and it'll be a first down. Well, this guy's going to make catches all over the field. That time, he lined up all the way to the left side, and he was able to cross the entire field to make a catch on the right side. Defense lost track of him, and it ended up being a big play. Georgia ready to dial it up on another first down. Movement here from the tight end. He'll pull it on the read. And he'll pick up the first down after a tough run there. There's an example of the offense taking advantage of all the attention the defense is giving this outstanding running back. Remember, he's one of the best in the game. They're expecting him to get the football. So the quarterback says, you know what? I'll just keep it. No one's keying on me. I'm going to get upfield and find an explosive play. Holds and fires completely. 
way to the right. And he goes down after making the grab. Pick up a few, but he's still short of the first down marker. Well, the play fake on the RPO bought the receiver some time to work himself open on the route. That was a man-to-man -man coverage on the defense. Nice job by the receiver putting his foot in the ground and separate. Offense gets set for second down. From the gun, the running back has it. Knocked down after a gain of one to the 27. Here comes third and short from the 27. This defense trying to make them settle for a field goal. To the ground to try to pick up the first. The dogs get it past the sticks. That is how it's done on third down and short. No doubt about it. An easy hole to get through and clearly get the first down. If you really want to simplify football, the low man wins. That time, the offense got the better of the D. Easily pick that up. As they get set to snap it, time winding down here in the quarter. Using his legs, it's ETN. And brought down, looks as if that's how we'll end the third. Well, they want to come out and try to get the run game established, but up front defensively, they made a play. They gave up nothing on that one. Got to find some breathing room if you're going to establish yourself on the ground, and there wasn't any that time. Yeah, Reese, I wonder now if this offense is maybe going to try to get to the perimeter of the field and see if they can use their speed to hurt this defense. Can't wait to see how this fourth quarter is going to go and see who can come out on top in this barn burner. Here comes the rush, and they've got him wrapped up at the 28. And the big defensive tackle getting off the rock. Nice job seeing play action, understand his pass, beats the guard, gets to the quarterback, and gets the QB on the ground. They've come through on the first two third down tries. This one might be a little tougher. The run to the left. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Goodness gracious, you blinked, you missed it. Horrible blocking up front. Defender gets in there so fast. Did he line up in the backfield? And now on fourth down, they will put it on the shoulders of the kicker to save them with his foot. Knocked it right through, showing that big range from 48 yards out. All field goals are not created equal, guys. Kicks in the fourth quarter take the lead. They just seem to carry so much more weight. So give that young man credit for getting out there and knocking that thing through the uprights with all the pressure, with all the eyeballs on him. He delivered. After that last field goal drive, they're set to kick it away. He'll bring it out from inside his own 10. Nice job executing all of the assignments as they put a stop to that return at the 22. The Gators sending the offense back to work. On the move, it's Mertz. Fires to the big fella. And he might be known for run fits, but that was a sure and heavy tackle on the tight end. You just get the feeling this defense is going to make it hard on them, right? They've got the lead. It's late. And they're going to try to tackle everybody inbounds. Offense is going to have to really work for this and be smart. You've got to attack the sidelines. You've got to throw first down. You've got to keep this thing moving vertically down the field. He'll do it himself. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. I think at this point, you might as well try to throw the ball down the field because this dog defense is not giving an inch. They don't give an inch. They hunt the whole entire game. And they're all highly recruited kids. They're all talented. They're all going to get drafted. But they play for each other. They play with fight. They play with aggression. And that's why you always see them near the top of the defenses in all of college football. And sure, tackling there to keep him from getting to the first down marker. 
This offense has their work cut out for them, man, because the coverage has been so tight. And if you're not throwing to the sideline or you're not getting past the sticks, this defense is going to tackle you inbounds like they just did on that last play and bleed the clock. The Gators will bring the punt team onto the field. They've been busy out there to punt for the fifth time today. Running it back, it's Evans. And the returner goes down. We're ready to get another look at this Bulldog offense. Guys, that last trip a little disappointing having to take the three. Yeah, I think, Jesse, you see so many offenses talk about getting yards and the tempo and all the stuff they do. It was a nice job moving the football, but they got to get in the end zone this time. Yeah, and I think to do that, it just got to be more physical at the point of attack. Get some push up front. They need to be the best running team in this game. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. He's looking to throw. And he goes out of bounds after a nice pickup on that one. Yeah, and you see running backs in today's football, they play a wide receiver basically for you, but you got to find a guy that you can throw it to, and you know he's going to catch the ball consistently. A completion, but not quite enough for the first down. Third down coming for this offense. They'll try to move the chains on the ground. They convert on third down as he gets it to the 46-yard line. It's a point in the game, I think, as a coaching staff, where you really challenge your offensive line to go win the football game, right? We've got to lead late. We're going to run the football. And the defense and everybody in the stadium knows that's what's going to happen. Can we run the ball down their throats and impose our will? That's what this offense right now is trying to do. The give and tick, 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 tick. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. We're trying to run the ball on first down, guys, but just nothing doing up front. Their offensive line got blown up on that play. There was nowhere for that guy to go. Time is on their side, and they're going to wind that play clock all the way down. Fast motion from the offense. They weren't able to get that one off. It'll be a delay of game. Delay of game. 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 Offense. Offense. That is a completely avoidable penalty. The quarterback just went into brain lock and lost track of the play clock. Give to the running back. Shows him the stiff arm. Really nice stop there from this senior leader. This is a big pressure moment for the offense, too, because they've got the lead, but it's now third down on their own side of the field. They would love nothing more than to be able to convert this, stay on the field, keep leading the clock. But the defense, I'd expect them to bring pressure here, trying to force the ball out of the QB's hands quickly. On third and long, doesn't need to take the check down. Didn't have much of a choice, just had to throw that one away. It'll be fourth down. And this is why you don't want to get in these situations. Third and long, defense knows it's pass. They're playing pass, playing deep. QB has nowhere to go with the football, so he just throws it away. Georgia sends out the punt team. They may have to pay him overtime. He's punting for the fifth time today. A fairly short distance here toward the sidelines. Not his best work. First down here with time for maybe one more play until the two-minute warning. He's looking to throw it. He'll try to do it himself. We have reached the two-minute warning, and time is of the essence if this offense is going to make a play. offense has a second down play wants to throw it's Mertz fires to the tight end and they pick up just a few on that completion important in the passing game that it's not just receivers doing all the work you got to get running backs involved you got to get your big fellas you got to get the tight ends going too Ball is at the 42-yard line, close to four-down territory. Here's third and short. From the gun, wants to pass. And the third down pass is incomplete. 
Well, I know it hasn't been a tremendous day statistically for this quarterback, but his decision-making has been good enough to win this game. Hasn't thrown a lot of TDs so far, but when things aren't open, he throws it away like on that play right there. He's not putting his team in a bad spot, and that's why they still have a shot to walk out of here with a W. Desperate to convert, and he'll throw it. That's caught. It's Wilson. And it looks as if they buzzed down. Replay wants to have another peek at that last play. And the play will stand after the replay booth just does a little double-checking to make sure. Got room at the 35. And they'll finally bring him down after he rips off a huge play. Quick timeout called by the defense, stopping the clock to save as much time as possible for their offense. They're in the red zone, first and 10 from the 20. They're going to ride this running back. Got some room in under the goal line. And he's sprinting. He'll take it all the way. Touchdown, Bulldogs. And you know, late in the games, offenses sometimes get conservative when they got the lead and they got the ball. I love this offense. They were aggressive. They got another score added to the lead. Now you're trying to salt this game away. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the extra point extends the lead to double figures at 10. Well, they didn't exactly milk the clock on that drive, did they? Two plays and into the end zone for the touchdown. Kickoff team has the ball teed up and they're about ready to go. And he takes this from inside the five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. Florida has the ball back, and here comes the offense. Dropping back, it's Mertz. Good job to toss that ball out of bounds and avoid the loss. And here comes the offense on second down. Misfired on the last play. They'll go back to the air. Feeling some heat. Not much of a chance there. He just had to get rid of it to avoid the sack. They can move the chains here. Maybe they can get this drive started. From the gun, wants to pass. Got it in the middle. It's Badger. Excellent job working through the air there, finding a hole in that defense and picking up a first down. The offense calls timeout. It's the second one they've used this half. They'll throw it on first down. Got his man on the right. Finally run out of bounds, but he has his offense rolling with the first down. And there's no quit in this team. Obviously, they're trailing late in the game, but they're trying to make it happen. We've seen two big plays now back to back. They're putting pressure on this defense. Finally, some signs of life from this offense, which has done nothing in the second half. It's first and ten. He wants to throw. That's reeled in. It's Burke. They stop him almost immediately. Short game there and still a little ground to cover to pick up the first. I think really good wide receivers do a good job of making every route kind of look the same. You could tell he, he, this looked like a vertical route. So if I'm a DB, I'm bailing and all of a sudden he sits that hitch down. Nice job by the wide receiver creating enough separation to create a positive game. The pass is in. Ball's incomplete. Brings up third down. Line is set on third down. Looking to throw, it's Mertz. Now he's going to send this one deep to the right. 
A sensational grab down the field there as they try to at least put a positive spin on the end of this game. They get the timeout called, 11 seconds remaining to play. He's going to pass. That pressure got to him, and he just had to chuck it out of bounds. Going to work in the red zone, they can't pick up the first down without getting it into the end zone. And back to the air on second down. And the misfire goes out of the back of the end zone. One more play to pad the stats. Third and long, and he'll try to throw for it. Can't make the connection in. Complete pass, and one second remains. And the offense got themselves in a tough situation. Third and long, so hard to execute, especially when the field starts to shrink. But the good news is they got a field goal in their back pocket. Coach has no choice here. The offense has to stay on the field, down multiple possessions this late. Fourth down attempt coming. Looking to the end zone. And that pass is incomplete. They were going for the consolation touchdown, but to no avail. And that's going to do it for this one.